catch up on the latest music news, social issues, exclusive interviews, album reviews, also featuring entrepreneurs doing big things, all on musiclifesocial.com. We do this for the people to empower the people. Welcome to Music Life Social Podcast. I am your host, Raheem, aka Big Heem. And today, I guess, by the way of Indianapolis, is comedian P. Rez is in the building, everybody. Give it up, give it up. Come on, brother. P. Rez, man, how you doing, brother? It's been a long time. I've been knowing this guy for over 20 years. We just reconnected or whatnot. Um, real quick, give give a brief summary uh, about yourself, man. All right. Uh, cool. So, yeah, like you said, I'm in uh, Indianapolis right now, just outside of town. i uh, been here about 10 years. Grew up in West Virginia, though. Charleston, West Virginia. I'm a mountaineer, um, but born in Houston. So I went to West okay. uh, probably right when I turned five years old. So I'm I'm from West Virginia, uh, but I'm a Naptown raised comedian. Um, so here I am now with a wife and two kids trying to hit that stage, man. Okay, yeah, man. I, I read some of your story. Of course, you was in the military and everything. Like you said, you got a family, and uh, you've been uh, you you dipped your foot in comedy, man. What what made you go go to com- the comedic route, man? So I've always wanted to do it. Uh, it's been mm-hmm. I've wanted to do for a long time, even since high school. Acting and comedy has always been something I wanted to do. But honestly, bro, I was scared. I was scared to get on stage and fail or look silly. Um, you know, so fast forward to finally doing it about four years ago, uh, me and two of my friends went and saw D.L. Hewley here in Indy and met him after the show. And D.L. was real cool and he will not remember me. I know he won't. But I asked him like a dumb question. I was like, uh-huh. uh, have you ever bombed on stage? He was like, what? Like, if you don't bomb, you ain't trying. Like, who who doesn't, right? So I kind of was like, oh, dang. Like, so like a vet like yourself. So I was turning 40 like two months later. And I was pretty much like, what am I waiting on, man? Why not? I'd rather try it and fail than, than never try it at all, man. So here I am almost four years in. Okay, cool, man. Dope. So, I mean... What helped you get over that fear? The first time when you stepped on stage, what 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 was it like, man? Did you did you have like a pre stage ritual or or, or, or what? Uh, so I was backstage. I remember going. It was it was at Helium. It was on June fifth, twenty nineteen. I never forget. And I was backstage, and I got three minutes. Mm-hmm. At the time, that seemed like an eternity. Um, uh, I was backstage. I almost didn't go on stage. I was so scared, like. So I just, uh, I heard the guys before me, um, everybody had, you know, their little thing. Um, I just did it. There was no ritual. Uh, the only ritual was making myself go out that door to the stage. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool, man. Cool. Um, so tell me, man, what's your, what's your comedic style? What, what's your style? What, 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 what do you like to talk about? Cause you know, some people talk about their life experience. Some people, they like to, you know what I'm saying? Go in, go in on, on, on the crowd and shit, you know, it, you know what I mean? <laughs> I leave the crowd alone. I, I don't bother the crowd unless they mess with me or unless a, a joke does really well and they're mm-hmm. part of my pick on them. But my style, I would say, is more uh, family history slash current family. I talk a lot about my upbringing. Okay. And I talk a lot about, like, my current life and kids. I've been with my wife almost 22 years, so there's a, there's a lot of material there. Uh, yeah, you can definitely pull a lot. And then a year old son, a 13 year old daughter. So a lot of the stuff I talk about is relatable. Um, someone told me mm-hmm. a time ago, just be original and be relatable. Um, it's almost impossible, like almost impossible to touch a topic that's never been touched, but just mm-hmm. your own creativity and origin. So do your do your family and do your kids they did they always encourage you like oh dad you funny you need to be on stage you need to be in comedy nah they, <laughs> now they they might laugh at me in the house but they I didn't talk about it a lot before actually doing it because it was one of my things okay. before I even met my wife one of them desires to have and then every now and then I would talk about it like I would go do an audition maybe a mm-hmm. agency here in Indy they didn't pick me up so I was like damn well no guess it ain't for me. Um, and so I tried to stay because open mic, anybody can go, right? Anybody can just go sign up and try it out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, okay. Has there ever been uh, a case where, you know, uh, you know, like a heckler in the crowd and shit and, you know what I'm saying, you had to you had to check them or it's one of those motherfuckers like, you know what, I'm going to fight this motherfucker after the show, man. Like, yo, man, what the fuck? The boy came to see you. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I've never experienced that. Um, And again, you know, this June is only four years, so I'm still pretty much an infant. Um. Okay. on the stage but i haven't i haven't experienced that very much uh i've gotten a couple of little responses and i'll kind of like get a little half jab back and then went on with my set so I've, I've never done that really okay all right so man tell me tell me about the comedy scene in in, in indy you know of course i live in atlanta it's big down here a lot of people a lot of comedians you know come through here i mean it's a lot of good local comedians i mean you know i know the competition is fierce, but you know, I assume it's like that everywhere. But again, I haven't, I haven't been to a comedy club in, in Indy, so I know, you know, Mike Epps is from is from Indy yep. or whatever. So, so tell me, what 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 is it like? The scene, um, it's a community. Um, it's not it's not huge. Um, if you've done comedy for a couple of months to a couple of years, you know a lot of the names. Um, okay, very supportive too, man. Like Aisha, Nate. Um, Big Mike, uh, Cobb, they all have their mics throughout the week, excuse me, or um, have their uh, their shows or even podcasts like yourself. And everybody knows and supports everybody. So somebody who has a, a mic on a Monday, they tr- mm-hmm. or, or I mean, Aisha, Aisha has a mic on a Monday, her and Mike Shaw. So anybody else would do their best to not step on their feet. Right. Or they know Nate has his mic on Thursday. So they try not to step on his feet um with with respect so it's a very it's a very uh well-oriented community man okay so you know right now what uh what comedians in the past have you looked up to or inspired you know or has inspired you and what current comedians do you kind of like look at and not necessarily not mimic their style but you kind of like their style or whatever and you're like yo you know what i'm saying maybe i can incorporate this into my show or whatever yeah. Um, so historically for me, it's Eddie Murphy. Um, and I know he only has two concert standups, Delirious and Raw. Um, the first one I saw was Raw. I know that was the second one, but that's the first one I saw. So from there, it was Eddie Murphy is, you know, the king to me. Uh, okay. He's always at the top of my list. But going forward, like currently, uh, Godfrey is one of my, probably my favorite one that I've seen live. He just, he flows so well in his delivery. Um, he relates to the crowd. He does a few voices, but it doesn't make his show. Um, he's excellent with just talking. Uh, I remember I saw him live here in Indy. About 15 minutes into his set, I said to myself, when's he going to start his set? Now, I knew he had already started it, but it was so natural. I was like, damn, dude is like effortless with it, man. Um, and him and the way Bruce Bruce also delivers, too. Like, he'll give a lot of uh relatable things with just random stuff so the way they relate to the crowd is, is great to me those two okay all right cool yeah man because i know uh for me historically it's uh richard Pryor. you know what i'm saying you know i i i, gra- I had i was listening to richard Pryor tapes yeah. when i was like five years old and shit <laughs> 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 like hey motherfucker <laughs> yeah you know <laughs> yeah. Well, uh right now you know of course you know dave Chappelle, mm. you know for me um deon cole deon cole man deon i mean deon cole Corey holcomb crazy crazy oh uh, uh, yeah 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 man yeah um so what what's the what's the next step for you man what's the what's the next big step for you in your for your for your career well personally i know um i want to get to an hour Okay, and so I'm, I, I have I have a good thirty, so I'm trying to solidify that and do that multiple times. Um, get myself on the platform to be able to headline to where I can be the guy who does about thirty, um, and eventually get to an hour, um, stop to buy, or start to start to finish. But I know with working full time, two very active kids. Um, comedy mm-hmm. isn't at the top of my list right now, although it, it will be, and it's very important. I got to prioritize. And I know we talked before about making some sacrifices also, man, but, uh, I'm gonna get there. I, I trust my path. 
Okay. Okay. Cool. Now, do you and other comedians ever just get in the room and y'all just go in on each other and shit? Just like you know, just just like you know, just let just let loose. You know what I'm saying? And, and work and you know work on on each other's uh, on each other's chops or whatever. Uh, so a lot of times that'll happen if you go to a mic and you're there a little early and a couple of dudes is just hanging. It might naturally happen. Um, I need to make myself more available and to just get myself even even writing groups. I know sometimes Cobb, Dwayne Cobb here, one of my kind of unofficial mentors would have like a writing class. He had done that in a while. I'm not sure because of the participation or not, but a lot of times if we were around each other, just at a, mm-hmm. the fun times are the open mics on the random side chats, man. That's where, it, that's where that happens. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, you know, so what's, what's like the, I guess, the best show that you did so far in your eyes, man? Um, that you was like, yo, I, yo, I'm killing it. <laughs> yo, I'm killing it. They feeling it. Yeah. There's, there's a handful, um, there's a handful of ones that I've trashed, like, like left the States feeling horrible. But the one probably is the most recent one that I did back in my hometown in Charleston. Um, okay. a dude named Rico from Charleston, you know, through, uh, through a show. Um, I wasn't the headliner, um, but I was like the feature. It's okay. good to get the warmth from the crowd. I went for about 15 to 17, and then like I kept them laughing. That's a good thing to keep them going from beginning to end. Um, and it felt good to just be able to be on stage at home. So that was that's probably the one for right now. Okay. All right, man. Um, you know, uh, you know, so... I mean, I, I I know you you it's not a top priority or anything like that right now, but you know I know eventually are you going to turn this into like acting, get into acting, movie roles? What what what's what's your plan? I would love for comedy to transition to the screen. Um, I would love to keep doing stand up because the high you get from being on stage and and getting the laughs um, to me right now is unbeatable. I've never really been behind the camera, like on the screen. So that's definitely a goal to, to get to shows and to, and to movies. Uh, okay. I'm going to do all, I'm going to do all three. Okay, cool. Now let me ask you, cause I know this is big in the, in the comedy world. Has anyone ever stole your jokes? You're like, yeah, damn, I just said that like last week. And this, now this one on stage, you know, taking my lines. <laughs> no, I haven't. No, I haven't. I haven't experienced it. Um, Maybe because I'm not a veteran yet, or maybe somebody didn't think my shit was funny enough. Um, right. I haven't, I haven't had it happen, but I see it. I see it happen, and then I see, uh, you know, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all that people talking about it. But I hadn't hadn't happened to me. Okay, okay. Well, look, man, tell the people where they can find you at on social media. You know, what I'm saying where they could, if someone wants to book you, you know, what I'm saying how they get in contact with you. And you know, if you have any like, you have any upcoming shows or anything up there in Indy or anything coming up? Not on on tab right now. There's some stuff that I'm working on, but nothing on the books officially. Um, okay. But on on Instagram, on Twitter, and even Facebook, it's is this comedian P Riz. I got the uh, the hat, you know, the mic. Uh, my homeboy Ian Johnson put this together. Uh, ha- hashtag Ian J. My home. Okay. Um, but yeah, comedian P Riz on on Twitter, Instagram and facebook and uh recently started TikTok. i haven't made many videos but i'm seeing a lot of people like get a lot of content out on TikTok as well so i gotta do better on the on the social media thing that's where you can find me man i'm active okay cool cool um real quick man tell tell people what, what's the hardest part about this business and what would you say to encourage others who want to follow in, in in your footsteps and, and really get into comedy, but you know, they may be scared to get up on that stage. So I'll answer this question first. The uh my advice would be just do it. There's nothing you need to wait on. Um a, a few times I've said I wish I would have started years ago. Then I, I stopped myself because my path is my path. So I'm gonna quit worrying about what I could have, should have, would have. But the advice I would give is there's nothing to wait on. You can go anywhere and just find an open mic, go put your name on the list, and go do it. There's nothing stopping you from just getting on the stage. That's my advice for for following. 
uh, the hardest thing for me personally is my balance. Uh, I started two months before I turned 40. And so with a wife, two kids, full-time job, my hardest thing with the, the comedy thing is just the balance to make sure I have my priorities and I'm not, um, I guess, ignoring them um, and, and, and the sacrifice. So personally, it's the balance that I'm, I'm, still, I'm still working on, man. Okay. All right. Well, there y'all have it, ladies and gentlemen. Comedian P. Rez, you know what I'm saying? Make sure y'all follow him. You know, check if you ever in Indy, you know what I'm saying? Check out his shows, you know what I'm saying? Check for him, you know what I'm saying? Book him, you know what I'm saying? I'm sure he's going to be making a trip down to Atlanta 